What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel, Reseller Life. I'm John, and I am a full-time eBay reseller. So what I got for you today is a sold video. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many uh, sold items I have for you on this video. I just kind of uploaded a bunch of them, and when the video is done, We'll, I'll post how many exactly we went through. So what I'm going to do is I, I go through some items that I sold, and I sold these ones in particular uh, this past week or weekend, and I'm going to tell you where I got them from or where I sourced them or picked them, what I paid for them, what they sold for, and ballpark uh, about how long they took to sell, give or take. So without further ado, let's jump right into it with this hunk of wood and metal. So this actually here, this came out of a storage locker. And I you can tell by, by our title, Vintage Sailboat Ship Decor. Uh, it is authentic. <clears throat> uh, I do believe it's a mast head or a boom head of some sort. I, 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 I couldn't tell you a hundred percent exactly because I don't know. I do know though it came off of a sailboat. I'm pretty sure it was used previously for um, uh, decor in like a restaurant of sorts. It came out of a storage locker. I got this storage locker probably two years ago. Um, I didn't list it right away, but um, from what I gathered, the information of the storage locker that I got. The gentleman had owned uh, some restaurants out in the San Diego area and they were uh, on the coastline and there was a lot of uh, uh, stuff like this. There was uh, shipping um, steering wheels for big ships, the big wooden ones, really cool with the little peg handles on them and everything like that. Um, it was the most expensive uh, storage locker I've ever bought, I paid $2,700 for it, but it was by far the most profitable storage locker I, I'd ever bought. Um, a lot of high-end items in there, a lot of expensive stuff, um, and a lot of nautical and everything like that. Um, I, I, I wish my experience level um, was where it is now when I bought that locker because I could have made a lot more money off of it. And a lot of stuff went to waste because I, I didn't know what things were. And... Especially like there was a lot of parts to sailboats and uh, I found out that uh, sailboats and sailing and sailboat parts are not cheap. So this, this gentleman, um, he, uh, he had a lot of sailboat parts, you know, he was building a sailboat or putting it all one together or he was just keeping the parts that he didn't use or his spares and he was keeping it in the storage locker. And a lot of these things, if I didn't know what they were, and I could, I would sit on them for a while, and they would gather dust, and they would get death piled, and then they would get damaged because I had some of the stuff I had stored outside. It ended up getting thrown away, but some of these, the parts and the things that I threw away was were worth hundreds. But you live and learn, you know. So anyhow, this uh, this was listed for about, um, I would say nine months, six to nine months. It was listed for a while, but it's it, it's an oddball thing. You got to find that one person that that wants something like this. It weighed about thirty pounds. It was big. It, it was probably I would say like thirty inches tall by twelve inches wide, not including the the little pieces of uh, metal here that were hanging off. But nine months, it um. It sold for $41.55, and that is not the shipping price. That's the shipping price is if, if I were to ship it to myself. They actually paid another, I think it was $45 for shipping. So, pretty expensive. Oh, they lost me. Let's see. I don't know how to get that back. Well, at least you guys don't have to look at my mug. I thought that would work, but I guess not. So next up, this here I got at a 
one of our local thrift stores. This is a polo, Ralph Lauren wool, uh, trench coat. It uh, it was actually in pretty decent condition. It was in uh, it had a couple little small moth not moth holes. The moth holes didn't go all the way through. They were just kind of on uh, on the surface, and they were real small, real hard to see. Uh, I got this for twelve fifty on a half off sale at a local thrift store. It was originally twenty five dollars. Uh, so I paid twelve fifty for it. It was listed last, or it was I think I believe it was actually listed in the springtime. So it's been listed for roughly five to six months, as expected. Though it it didn't sell until the cooler weather. Um, I wouldn't recommend listing your stuff in uh, in like this and you're in the warmer parts of the year. Uh, it just the likeliness of it selling. It isn't as good. I mean, there's there's places that are going to be cold, so it you know your stuff still will sell, but I feel like you're going to get lower offers. You're going to be tempted to lower the the sell price if it's sitting around too much. Uh, it, and this kind of stuff you can get a lot cheaper this time of year. Even when you're sourcing, you can get this stuff a lot cheaper because people are getting rid of it, and and you know just. Buy it cheap in the warmer seasons and store it away uh, and, and just mark it as, as winter inventory. And then when it comes, you know, August, September, you know, even July, and you're just a month or two away from the, the colder season, you're going to be ahead of the curve. You're going to have all your listings up and you'll be the, the first one that people look at. So this did sell for $84.97. Plus another, I believe it was twenty dollars shipping. Uh, it took about five to six months to sell, but only a couple months into our in the cold season. So, uh, if it would have been listed in say September, um, which it probably should have been, it would have only taken a couple months to sell. So good find on that one. That was really good find. It was a nice coat. This one I actually might have showed y'all in uh, in a haul video recently my last haul video I, I don't know if i had this one in there i think i did but i'm not 100 percent sure so uh these waffle irons or cookie irons or sandwich irons uh, i don't know how to pronounce the word exactly nope not gonna do it but this is what it is right here there's model numbers on them disney came out with some vintage ones of these where they were like kind of sandwich makers and they had mickey and minnie's faces on there or just mickey's face but these things have excellent excellent resell uh, obviously i just listed this one a couple days ago and it sold within i think 24 or 48 hours i had paid six or seven dollars for it and it did sell for 47 41 dollars and 60 cents All right, here's another one of those type of deals where I probably should have waited to list this uh, because the way I kind of I, I run my store is I, I, I when, when my items are listed for 30 days and they end after 30 days, all my items are 30 day listings unless they're uh, retail arbitrage and I have a large quantity of them. Um, I will bump the price by 10% every 30 days. So this is one of those things that's been listed for a year and every month it's just been bumped up another 10%, 10%, 10%. I should have gotten probably around $15 for this, but um, it's been listed all year. I should have taken it down even if it was listed and relisted it in uh, September or August. But either way, it's sold $4.58. I probably pulled this one from a thrift store and I don't believe I would have paid more than two dollars for it so not a great flip but it, things are moving this is a cool item um, I found this one at the local bins Goodwill bins and by weight I probably paid three dollars for it and this is a vintage um, ski suit from the 80s or 90s not the most appealing colors, but it is funky. It's got some crazy colors going on, a crazy pattern. Uh, a lot of people are into like the more neon type colors, but this one, this one definitely worked. Uh, we we listed this one in the springtime, and it is now um, end of November, 
So three dollars got at the local bins sold for fifty seven ten. I don't do best offer on 99% of my items and so the prices that you see typically for the most part unless somebody messages me and sends me an offer uh, is going to be exactly what it sold for and I, I used to do best offer and I used to enjoy the extra traffic and uh, you know the extra opportunities to sell but I get really tired of the low ballers and more so than the low ballers because you're, you're going to get low ballers but more so was the fact that people would make an offer you would accept it and they would never pay and I would constantly be having to open up unpaid item cases and sometimes it was on really expensive hot selling items and you have to wait and go through the process for you know the case to close you got to give the buyer you know a certain amount of time to pay and when you've been doing this a while you you know when somebody is not going to pay so and it, it's just a, it really sucks to have to pull your some of your good and higher end products off especially when you have a little bit of extra capital into some of these you know you want to get some of that money back so i stopped doing best offer um i would say that there has been a little slowdown in in uh in in purchases if that you know it, it's not really enough to even notice and it is 100 percent worth not having to deal with ha opening unpaid item cases all the time uh, i haven't had to open an unpaid item case in a year since i stopped doing a uh, best offer so if you are a new seller i would definitely suggest to do um, best offer until you've really established your store and you've got you know a lot of listings in there are consistent listings and uh, and, and you know you're doing well and you're doing consistent you know so anyhow next to the next one this is uh, this is a PlayStation 2 uh, there's different models of the PlayStation 2 um, this one is the fat console and there'll be a model number underneath it which is this one right here uh, 39001 sometimes you can put in the memory and the drive capacity um, I didn't because uh, a lot of these people know the model number they can match it up this came out of a storage locker so I probably have less than a dollar into it it was listed for roughly a month and I we sold it for $19.41 and they paid shipping as well Next up, okay, this one I know was on the haul video because I was excited to show it, because I was excited to find it. Um, I had never found a jar opener before, and this is my first one. I, <clears throat> I listed it, and it sold within 48 hours. Um, uh, I could have got uh, $50 for this one, but I always run a 20% off sale. So uh, it gives my listings that extra promotion while undercutting um, the majority of my competition by 20%. So I do actually run a legit 20% off sale all the time. So we ended up getting $39.82 on this. I only spent $1 on this item. So great flip, great find. Keep an eye out for uh, jar openers. And I, uh, I got it from a yard sale. Here is a George Foreman grill drip tray. Okay, so this is the little eight inch one. This is the, these things sell, and you can get them for close to nothing. And the ones, they, these things can go up to 16 inches too. And the 16 inch ones you can typically get around $15 for. They're super, super easy to list. It's a George Foreman drip tray. And all you have to do is put a ruler to it or a tape measure and, and put, how long it is and what color it is so and I got I accumulate a lot of these things through uh, storage lockers over the years and when uh, when I had my thrift store one thing about my thrift store and selling at the flea market stuff like that we would get a lot of George Foreman grill, grills a lot of them and we couldn't give those things away I don't know why 
I mean, they work well, they work well, but for some reason I couldn't give them away, but I could always sell the drip trays online. And typically we would, we would literally put a dollar on George Foreman grills and I couldn't sell them for a dollar, but I could sell the drip trays for, you know, for example, the, the eight inch one for five bucks to 10 bucks and the 16 inch one for 15 bucks all day. The drip tray. Weird, weird, weird world. Weird world. Get my wording right. But this one actually has been listed for probably like three to four months. Um, but I had about five or six of these, so it's kind of a quantity thing. So they've been selling. All right, so here is a King Cobra 2 oversized uh, six iron. So this uh, we got at a, a local thrift store and I think I got a whole set of these and decided uh, it was gonna be better to part them out individually. I believe I paid $5 for the whole set and it was about, I think it was 10 clubs altogether. 10, 10 to 12 clubs, something like that. But they all, um, we've sold a few of them. I still have a few of them. This one was, has been listed for about three months. And I've gotten as high as $22 for these. And this is, I believe, the lowest I've gotten on one of these clubs, which is $9.38. Don't be intimidated by golf clubs. A lot of people um, don't want to ship them. But you can actually order the tube mailers from USPS and you can order them and get them for free. They'll send you a whole case of them for free. I believe they're 32 or 36 inches, which is a, was just a little too short for this golf club and they're actually too a little too short for most golf clubs. So I'll actually make two of them up and then cut one into three pieces or two pieces and then just stick one right on top of it. If the golf club is hanging out just a little bit, I'll use the end cut off of another tuber and put it on there and just tape it right on. And then I'll keep the, the spare end of, the, of the, the tube that I cut and use it for the next one. Uh, I sell a lot of golf clubs, so um, I got to Frankenbox them up every once in a while, but it's, it's not one of those intimidating Frankenboxes. It's super, super easy. Next up. Okay, so this is a pair of vintage Levi 501 jeans, and they don't have to be big E Levi's um, to, to get a decent profit out of them. Big E being on the Levi's spell out, the E is capitalized. That's why they're called big E Levi's. So these ones are just vintage, they're older, they might be 80s, they might be 70s, but they're not old enough to be big E's. Um, and they're super distressed. They're um, they're not in phenomenal condition. If you can see, you see they're all ripped up, but they have this great character to them. And denim lovers are into this. So, and these ones, I'm pretty sure are probably early '80s or maybe even late '70s. But you can get the ones from the 90s or the late 80s and they're just tore up. You know, those like hairband Levi jeans that are just ripped up and, and, and people are into that. Denim is trending, especially Levi's. So if you see an old pair of Levi's at your bins or a yard sale and they're just destroyed, pick them up, pick them up because I can guarantee that 1768, what I got for these is probably the low end. I, I've sold uh, super distressed Levi's um, for the most part closer to the $30 range so yeah uh, I think the reason why these might have sold for this and stayed listed for as long as they had because they probably been listed for about four to five months is because of the awkward size of them they were 35 30 35 29s so yeah but I got these out of a storage locker so I actually found a whole box full of them, and I've done really well with that box of old Levi's. And yeah, I probably have about 50 cents, maybe even less into them. <clears throat> Next up, um, I used to do really well with DVDs. Uh, not so much anymore, so I will scan through them to see which ones uh, sell for you know roughly $6 or better. And whichever ones don't, they get lotted up. 
something like this. Um, if I have a suggestion with maybe trying to upsell it a little bit, put the comedy movies with the comedy movies, the dramas with the dramas, the actions with the actions, biographies, um, uh, series or like uh, multi discs, like you know, series like you know, if you got the Sopranos or Friends or Seinfeld or anything like that, you know, TV shows or something like that, keep them all together if they're not worth anything. Uh, but to, to add on that with the TV show ones, uh, sometimes I've actually done well if you have, like, for example, you have the first season of Friends or something like that. Um, instead, of, instead of selling the whole, just, you know, the Friends season one, um, sell the discs individually. Because a lot of times people already have it, but they're missing a disc or one disc got scratched real bad, so they just need the disc. So instead of selling season one for, you know, five bucks, you can possibly sell each disc for five bucks. Um, it might take a little longer to, to, to sell them, but I, I've done it before and it worked really well for me, actually. So these were listed for, these might have been listed for about six to eight months. And uh, these all came out of storage lockers or... They came in through my thrift store. Um, we would always give people 30, cent, 30 cents a piece for, for used DVDs and or 60 cents in store credit, which we would sell our DVDs in our store for $2 a piece. This is a retail arbitrage. This is an OtterBox um, for an iPhone 6 and 6S. Um, this is a very recent retail arbitrage. Uh, I probably paid three to five dollars for this one. Some of the order boxes I paid three for, and some of them we paid five for. But they all seem like they had some pretty decent turnaround. So, uh, careful with order box. I don't believe you can sell these things used. You have to sell them new. Uh, you will get in trouble if you try to sell used order boxes. So that one was just a retail arbitrage. It took about a week or so within a week to sell and um, let's just say I got five into it I didn't make a lot of, but I got a lot of these cell phone cases and I knew they would sell fast around the holidays so this is a super super old listing I thought this kind of stuff would do better but it didn't and um, yeah I got two Nike or Jordan uh, don't use the word onesies one piece jumper um, bodysuit or anything like that. The word onesie is trademarked. So if you do use the word onesie, you will get flagged. They'll pull your listing down. And if you do it again, typically they'll give you a warning at first. Uh, but if you do it again, you will get uh, in trouble and possibly get your store suspended for a period of time. Um, but yeah, these were listed for at least a year, at least a year. Uh, they came out of a storage locker, locker, so I probably have a couple, a nickel into each one of them, and they sold for four dollars and forty nine cents. All right, these also came out of a storage locker. They have been listed since about February. Um, yeah, these are a couple Christmas docking hangers. They weren't uh, cast iron. They were made of metal. Um, uh, they did have like uh, made in China stickers on them and stuff like that. So they were nice, but they weren't like cast iron or vintage or anything like that. So got a, you know, probably less than a quarter into them and they sold for $8.02. Here is another phone case. This one is another otter box. Uh, this was a, a definitely a, a better one of the boxes. Um, like I said, for the otter boxes, I paid three to five dollars a piece for them. Uh, even with the damaged case, uh, which was noted as a new other, um, it still got fourteen dollars and seventy-two cents for it, and it sold within a week. This is a new with tags Columbia, uh, swirly youth hat. It's just a funky little Columbia hat. Uh, anything Columbia has got new with tags on it. Um, it's got to be a win. Uh, this came out of storage locker, so I got about you know, less than a quarter into it. And I listed this one probably a month ago, and it sold for $8.78. Here's 
Here's an item y'all should definitely look out for is uh, thermostats, these digital thermostats. Um, I found this one at a local thrift store and I probably paid, I paid less than $2 for it, I'm sure. Um, they used to sell them for about 50 cents, but I think they started catching on because I was buying all of them every time they came out. And because some of these even used, I was making, I was selling, I was selling them for, I think some, some of them I sold for even $75, these thermostats. So, um, definitely be on the lookout for thermostats. This is definitely on the lower end of them, but it was, it, it, it had a, had a sell through rate. It was selling, had it. So, um, it was sitting in a death pile for a long time. Um, believe we listed this about eight or nine months ago got it from a thrift store paid i i would say well, let's just stick with two dollars paid two dollars for it and sold for eight eight dollars and 19 cents um don't mind the brand either because uh that honeywell makes a lot of different thermostats the ones that i sold for 75 dollars were honeywells as well um Anyhow, next one, we have a Batman for Wii U. This was new sealed. Uh, I listed this one about a week ago. Uh, this came out of a storage locker. And so I got about a quarter into it and sold for $13.42. Uh, you may have heard me uh, mention before that I haven't bought a storage locker in probably uh, maybe even going on a year now. And uh, it's because I don't have my, my store anymore, my thrift store anymore, and uh, storage lockers are messy. Uh, they make a mess. They, uh, there's always a lot of trash. There's typically a lot more trash than there is actually sellable stuff. And uh, my property had gotten pretty messy, so I kind of told myself I wouldn't buy another storage locker until I got it all cleaned up. So... Some of these things that you're seeing that I uh, that I'm mentioning, like I listed it a week ago and I got it on a storage locker, is because I'm trying to clear out uh, some back stock that I have um, from storage lockers and my thrift store that we actually emptied out and we put into some of a uh, some kind of storage unit type things out on our our property. So anyhow, next up. This is a quick coupler brass set. This is for like um, um, like air compressors to, to switch out the tips on it. This came out of a storage locker as well. It's been listed for at least six months, but within a year. I uh, have about a quarter into it and sold for $4.32. Nothing special about it, but it was new and easy to list. Uh, another ugly Christmas sweater. Sweater vest, cardigan type thing. Uh, this came from a local thrift store. Probably, I, th I think I actually remember paying about 50 cents for this one because they were clearancing them out after the holidays. And I went in and bought them all. Um, another, another one that's just been listed late too, way too long and uh, kept bumping down the price. And so that's what we got for it, $6.59. But that's all right. I got only 50 cents into it. This is a good find. Um, this is a Polaroid camera film. It is older film. You can see right here that it's actually, it is expired and it's been expired since 2002. So it was probably manufactured um, in the 90s because the stuff has a pretty solid shelf life. Um, I got this out of a storage locker. It is actually one of my better storage lockers I've ever bought. There was a lot of film and cameras and stuff like that in this locker. So uh, I have about a quarter or so into this. And the best part about this one, uh, I believe I had about 10 of these at one point. These little boxes of film, these, this, this Polaroid film in particular. Um, I was getting about 60 bucks for these uh, when, I, when I first listed them about eight months ago. But uh, somebody else who had a bundle of them came in and undercut me. So we've kind of just been going back and forth, undercutting each other. He had a lot more than I did. So um, I didn't want to wait it out until he sold all of his. Because even when I was the only one that had them, I was only selling about one every 
one of, about once a month. So I wanted to push them. I wanted to get rid of them while I had them. So I wasn't. I didn't. I didn't mind undercutting them the way the way that I had to. Still thirty one dollars and one cent uh, when I got a quarter into it, and it was one listing with a quantity. Um, I'll do that all day. I love quantity listings. Um, this is uh, one of the one of the items that I push people to look out for. These are these Cuisinart food processors. Um, I always part them out. The parts sell amazingly. Uh, this one here in particular was probably listed for about six months. They typically sell faster than that, but I priced mine a little higher initially because these things do sell for up to about $50. The only thing that really gets you is these things are about 15 pounds and they are a large, awkward shape. Uh, you typically have to send that, ship them in a box that's about 12 by 12 by 10 and it gets over that 15 pound mark. So if you do sell it locally, you know, within, you know, a state or two away from you, you can get closer to that $50 mark. But if you're sending it, you know, halfway across the U.S. or something like that, you're going to get around, um, the fifteen to twenty-five dollar range, because uh, excuse me, a shipment like that is going to cost the customer about fifty bucks. So uh, I I typically find these either at storage lockers or thrift stores or yard sales. I'm not exactly sure where I found that this one, but I don't believe I've ever pay, paid more than uh, seven dollars for one with the working bowl, the lid, and the blade. So I probably have about a dollar into this base. All right, this is one of my mini AC adapters that I sell. Um, I probably paid about, uh, I'd say, a quarter for this one. I either got it at the, our local bins or at a uh, auction that I like to go to where I buy big, uh, big bins full of these things. And I just, uh, um, yeah, it goes auction style. So I typically don't pay no more than 150 bucks for the entire bin but I can uh, I can get maybe 100 or 200 of those things out of the entire bin um, yeah uh, I don't know how long it was listed because I have so many AC adapters listed that I can't keep track of all of them so uh, next up this is a retail arbitrage deal I got this uh, at a Walmart retail arbitrage I paid six dollars for each one of these, and uh, this one in particular only sold for sixteen dollars and forty cents with free shipping. It only weighed with a box about six ounces, so uh, the shipping was really really cheap. I think it was uh, it was under three dollars, so I at least doubled my money on that one. And I was a little confused why they even had these at the Walmart in Arizona. I don't even believe we have moles in Arizona, so you know that probably explains why it was clearanced. Um, I actually got 11 of these, and somebody bought one, another person bought two, and then somebody else came in and bought eight of them. Uh, I had listed them about a week ago, and uh, they're all gone now. So that was a good find. This came out of a storage locker. Um, I like these kind of manual type uh, type books um, they're easy to list uh, this one uh, couldn't go on to Amazon which I actually started listing on Amazon within the last two weeks and I'm super excited about it I'm glad I finally made the made the plunge and just to let you all know listing on Amazon is stupid easy compared to eBay stupid easy I'm like I'm just looking for stuff to put on Amazon just because the ease of it is is so awesome. Um, I'm hoping I'm doing it right because it's been about two weeks and nothing sold yet. But we'll see. I'll let y'all know when uh, when I actually sell my first thing on Amazon. It'll be an exciting day. So this one, storage locker, got um, less than a quarter into it. Took uh, about six months to sell. And sold for five dollars and fifty-one cents. Next up, this is another retail arbitrage deal. This one came from Walmart as well. I paid fifty cents a piece for these. There was only four of them there, and um, 
they were selling for about six bucks a piece and I didn't want to do that individually because uh, a lot of them were six bucks with free shipping uh, I figured all four of them would fit into a padded flat so I just bundled them all together so I have two dollars into all four of these they sold within just a couple of days for nineteen dollars and eighty two cents free shipping which the shipping costed me about seven bucks so I netted about ten bucks on that one here is another phone case this is a spec phone case um, I have three dollars into each one of these I'm not doing free shipping on them because there's so many different models and colors so uh, I wasn't able to keep track as consistently as I like to do it just in my head it's probably not that confusing but I'm making it confusing for myself um, so yeah, so I didn't charge. I did charge shipping on this one, and it sold for nine dollars and four cents. I probably made an additional dollar on the shipping, um, and it took about a week or two to sell. This is an interesting one. So I got this at our our local bins, and uh, this is some sort of light therapy type thing. Um, you hook it up into a machine. Uh, or like a like an AC adapter with a small little um, box motor type thing and uh, these UV lights somehow um, relieve pain uh, I believe it's some kind of a medical device and it was just sitting at the bins um, I plugged it in I tried to get it going and it, it wasn't working right unfortunately because this whole unit together sells for about 700 bucks and I got it at the bin, so I paid maybe two bucks for it. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't working. I got a friend of mine who uh, does like some some techie stuff. He's a technical engineer, and um, I was gonna see if he could fix it, but he didn't really want to get into it. So I actually had him test each of the units, and he said it was coming from uh, the base unit or whatever. So he said the pads seem to be. To, to be getting a good signal or whatnot. I don't know, I'm not a, a technical engineer. So he said that the pads were good, so I'm like, right on. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can part them out. And sure enough, I could. The pads were getting uh, about $125 and they sold within the first three days. So big score. I uh, probably have a dollar into it. Yeah, definitely look out for uh, to, uh, for medical equipment, especially like stuff that's kind of odd and you've never seen it before or anything like that, some stuff like that. When I saw it at the bins, I was like, man, this is kind of unique. I've never seen it before. And uh, unique sometimes needs money. Um, thankfully enough, it had a model number and the AC adapter was right there with it, which the AC adapter is where I found the model number. <clears throat> All right, so this is not a win for me. This is an older uh, VTech model type phone. I got this uh, cordless home phone. I got this from the bins. Um, it worked fine, tested well. Um, I got less than a dollar into it. Um, sold for $10.74. Everything's going great. Unfortunately, it wasn't the right model that I sent to the customer. Um, I saw a lot of these phones, and uh, there was another one in there that was very very similar to this one but it wasn't the right one so I actually sent it to the customer I sent him the wrong one he uh, he received it he didn't he, he I wish he would have contacted me first because uh, I would have told him to keep the phone I'll send you uh, the one that you ordered and I will um, pay for your shipping your original shipping and I'll pay for the shipping to get the new phone out there so he uh, he put in for the return, so it's on its way back. He left me uh, negative feedback, unfortunately, and uh, that's just one of those things. It was a mistake on my part. It was definitely my fault. Um, I wish he would have contacted me first, but you know these things happen. Um, luckily for me, I got a lot of feedback, and uh, my uh, feedback percentage is still pretty good. I'd say it's a uh, 99.7. Um, but yeah, it could have been a win, but you know, human mistake, human error. 
be careful. We'll get you model numbers. So, and then here is a lot of uh, camera manuals, just random ones. Uh, this came out of the camera storage locker, and uh, I, I probably had the cameras for these manuals, um, but they were just sitting around, and I was like, hey, let's uh, see if we can just sell a variety of camera manuals. And actually, this is the third one that I've sold within the last six months. I believe it's the last one. It was just a big, you know, stack of manuals, and we just parted it out into three little lots. Uh, this one took about, I would say, six months to sell, five to six months to sell on this one. Got almost nothing into it, and sold for nine dollars and two cents. I believe this is the last one that I uploaded. So I might have shown you this one before because it has sold before. The uh, the last person that bought it just decided to change their mind and uh, they send it back, uh, which is no big deal. Um, they actually paid for the return shipping and uh, they didn't remove the tags and it wasn't scuffed up or marked up <clears throat> or anything like that. It was in the same condition it was in when I sent it to them. So this thing originally sold to them for I think it was $45 but I've had to relist it a couple of times since then and I've bumped it you know 20% since then so I believe I have about seven dollars into this um, I got this at a Goodwill thrift store and it's it was sold initially the first time within like the first week and then this time around, it took about two months to sell. But still a good fit. flip. Um, it's an easy shipment. It goes right into a poly mailer. Um, super quick, super easy. So, yeah, that's all I got for you on this sold video. Hope you all got some nuggets out of it. Um, and, yeah, if you, uh, if you enjoyed the contact, let me know. If you want to hear anything more or anything different, you got any questions about anything that you saw and I left out, um, leave it in the comments below and I will get back to you. Hit that like button for me. I really appreciate it. It helps me, encourages me to make more videos, and we'll catch you all next time. All right, good night, guys.